title of our seminar series is called the Seven String Seminar Series. Why? <laughs> do, do you want a hint? Do you like a hint? It has to do something about me. So I, want, I would like you to think about this. I'm, I'm giving you a hint. It has to do with something that I do quite often. Okay, so I would like you to think about it. You got it, Jim? Jim. Yeah. Think about it. Think about it. Okay. For something you do for you to do your research on. I've given you a hint now. Okay? The two points that I'm going to make now. First one, in the process of development, there are five phases. All these phases, phases are connected. They provide a platform to the other. They act like a support system to the other. Okay? Phase one is technical, scope development. Phase two, side by side, is physical fitness, conditioning. Phase three, side by side, is strategy. Phase four, side by side, is nutrition, which equals, gets to phase five, mental toughness. Okay. Phase one, technical, so development. Phase two, conditioning, physical fitness. Phase three, strategy. Phase four, nutrition. Phase five, mental toughness. Within these phases, the details are absolutely uh, overwhelming. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. The second point I want to make is, in my books, three of the biggest reasons why I believe tennis has become so powerful, why it has become so explosive, is one, technique. Point two, technology. Point three, training methods, among so many other factors. The three factors again, technique, technology, training methods. Okay. Here's a question for you. As we are going through the technical parts on the forehand today, my question to you is, as you're facing me, as you're facing me, from a preparation standpoint, regardless of where the ball is at, regardless, for now, you simply said, if you know the answer, you can raise your hand and I'll, I'll ask you, and I'll, I, I will be here, and you can answer it. Okay. As you're watching me, do you think this is, this preparation is correct? I'll move around. Have a look. Take some pictures. I'll turn around. Side view. Do you think this preparation is correct? Anton shakes his hand and says no. Anybody? Lisa, what do you think? That's not up to me. You can say yes. You can say you don't know. You can say you're not sure. Lisa says it looks good to her. Anybody else? Chris? Uh, uh, Rich, sorry. It's close. <laughs> what did you just say? It's close. It looks close. Okay, Anton, why do you say it's not correct? That's right. So from a preparation standpoint, that is one of the worst things that you can, that is one of the most common ways of preparing on the forehand. I want to 
clarify this about myself. Everybody that teaches almost all over the world, for everybody, literally their work starts with their legs. Not for me. My work starts with their hands. If your hands are out of place, you will always get your legs in a, in a in position at a spot where they are they are going to end up paying the price for your hands being out of place. Okay? So keep that in mind. Everything I do starts with your hands. Everything starts here. And it will funnel through to your legs. Keep that term in mind. Funneling through. Connected, funneling, platform, support system. Everything is connected. Okay? So I will go over the preparation with you. Anton just mentioned about the elbow is too close. That is one of the most common issues in a club tennis player, actually around the world. It's one of the most common reactions that people have. I am too close to the ball. One of the easiest ways, if not the easiest ways, you can, you can, you can know, you know what? If a person has space, distance, freedom, separation, isolation, is look at the elbow. I'm going to face you now. If you look at my preparation, the preparation that I showed you, look at the elbow. There's the shoulder. Again, you're learning about the body. Shoulder, elbow, wrist. So, most common issues. What you cannot do is you cannot turn the shoulder. You cannot rotate the shoulder. Okay? What I mean by that is, here's my right arm. I'm sorry. Everything starts off with the right grip. So hopefully for the forehand, you are using an eastern, semi-western forehand grip, or a semi-western forehand grip, or a semi-western to a western forehand grip. I prefer eastern, semi-western, or just semi-western. I'll just leave it at that for now. Okay? Preparation. There is the arm. I'm a righty. When I say rotation of the shoulder, this is what I mean. As you can see, my elbow is basically stuck to my hip. That's what you cannot do. There's a side view. It's one of the most common ways of preparing to hit a forehand. And this is so wrong. So, if let's say Anton was teaching me, okay, and I said to you, you know what, I would like you to move, move, you hit the ball too close, I would like you to create separation, I would like you to free, create freedom, space. I can move, I mean, to the best of my ability and more, but due to my arm being out of place, it will never be enough. I will always hit the ball close to the body. I will always hit the ball in front of me, which you cannot do. And this is what I mean by that. There's a front view. Rotation of the shoulder. In front of you. If you look at my elbow, it is right on my abdomen. I do not have a release. And that means I am very close to the ball. I will be very blunt telling you this. And I'm sure people have told this on several occasions. When people say hit the ball in front of you, that is so wrong. You can quote me on anything and everything I've told you. You don't want to hit the ball in front of you. You want to hit the ball to the side of you. Hitting the ball in front of you is a byproduct of hitting the ball to the side of you. It's a result of having space, distance, freedom. So, any questions so far?
You can interrupt me at any point that you want to. You can ask questions, you can make comments. So, the correct way to prepare. You hit a forehand. I'm going to turn around. Here's a side view. Here's a shoulder. Connecting with your body. Shoulder, elbow, wrist. With the grip in place. Left hand in place. When I say left hand in place, some of my students have their left hand, their opposite hand, on the neck of the racket. Some of my students have the, the left hand on the grip, which I do not prefer. And some of my kids have their, and I do, I have my left hand on the throat of the grip. I prefer this. So you can have it on the neck, or you can have it by the throat. And understanding technique, you must understand the use of the opposite hand. It's a, you must understand how the opposite hand provides support, guidance, it aids the preparation, it aids creation of your technique. Okay? Any questions so far? Okay, here's the preparation. Grips in place. I use a semi-Russian forehand grip. If you look at my shoulder, I will clear my shoulder, meaning I will clear the arm. You have to learn to be independent. You have to learn to isolate. You have to learn to divide. You have to learn to separate okay you cannot be one unit when I say one unit this is what I mean this movement is coming from the hip meaning the entire body there is absolutely no isolation that's wrong in my books it's completely wrong there is independence, the correct way of doing it. Look at my arm. Here is, I'm going to clear out the shoulder so I can separate the arm, so I can clear the elbow from the body, from my hip, from the abdomen. Ready? There it goes. If you look at my elbow, it has completely gotten cleared of my body. Complete. Okay, one more time. I'm using my left hand from the front to solve the rotation. Shoulder rotation basically is getting your opposite hand to, if you're righty, my left hand to my right side. If I'm a lefty, my right hand to my left side. This is what it is, a shoulder turn. Here is the One of the things I always tell my students, I work with Jay a lot. I work with Anton today. You must always listen to your arms. By listening to your arms, you can listen to your legs. Keep this term in mind. It's continuous elasticity. It's continuous stretching. It's continuous flexibility. It's continuous spread. You have to continuously keep stretching with the help of your technique. Any questions? Yeah, question. So, you know, you're talking about the setup to get that elbow space. So, if you get your elbow space, is it okay if you start bringing up your hand or like even bringing it back more? Because your elbow is space, but if you do a stroke, in here, no, you or if you bring it up more, no, you cannot. 
Okay, that's a, that's a great question. The, the setup, so called the preparation, it has to be at an exactly particular spot. It's, it, it's an exact spot. Okay, this is basically what Jay was saying, really. So, there's a back view. Do you think this is correct? I have space. Go on. Well, do you think this is correct? I have space. Well, do you think this is correct? I have space. No, it's not. So three angles into one. I call this an off angle. The preparation has to go high. It has to go away from you. And it has to be around you. So the elbow is exactly sitting at that particular spot. And that spot is, an off angle is, here it is, a, a side view. Okay? There is an off angle. This would be broken for me. What am I moving here? Shoulder. What am I moving? My shoulder. I want to clarify this with you. This is the entire arm. Our arm, three joints, wrist, elbow, shoulder. The upper arm is controlled by the shoulder. Okay? The lower arm is controlled by the, by the elbow. What you have to learn to do is keeping this term in mind. Flexibility, being elastic. You have to use the elbow to increase the elasticity of your wrist. And this is one of the most complex movements in tennis from a technical standpoint. Okay? I will turn around and I'll show you. One of the Did I answer your question? Yes. Here it is. <laughs> Elbow. Okay? This frame, you have to maintain this frame. This frame cannot be broken. You have to, again, one of the, I, I don't know how many times I've talked to Jason about this. Pressure distribution, feel, okay? It's one of the hardest aspects of technique, is understanding pressure. For example, you're watching me now, okay? Look at my right arm. Do you think my right arm is relaxed? Absolutely not. My wrist is, but not my arm. I'm very tight. Do you think I'm relaxed in any way? Absolutely not. Okay, I'm gonna hold the racket. Do you think I'm relaxed? I would think so, I am. But I'm very weak. Understanding feel, being able to sense it, being able to identify it, being able to track one of my core terms, being able to track it. You have to maintain pressure distribution. For example, here's my frame. My pressure from the shoulder through to my biceps, the elbow, lower arm, forearm, right through to my wrist. Now it's quite even. But the wrist area is fairly relaxed. I'm strong, yet I am very relaxed. That is so hard to do. And how do you get there? You train. This is one of the most complex sciences that's out there. Going back to a key term that I mentioned to you. Technique, technology, training methods.
just like everything else, tennis has completely evolved. Just like anything else. It has, it has become so scientific as to how we hit the ball now. And in relation to how we hit the ball now, the sport has become so fast. Any questions? I'm going to demonstrate. Hold on to your question, Jay, please. I'm going to demonstrate the elasticity of the, of the wrist with the help of the elbow. Okay? Upper arm, shoulder, lower arm, elbow. I'm going to side view. Pressure. Look at the independence. Not one unit. There is no division here. Look at the elbow. You must be so aware of yourself. Elbow has to clear. Space. Elasticity right there. Ready? Here it goes. Look at the elbow. I'm going to stretch it. By engaging the wrist. I'm going to engage the wrist. I'm going to use the elbow to be elastic. is nowhere close to my wrist, I mean, to my body, nowhere close. I want to mention this to you, by providing the platform, every stroke has its own guidelines. You have to learn these guidelines, so called the science of that particular strokes, through movements. You are learning how to use the wrist, by, by dividing by isolating, by separating, by clearing out the elbow and the shoulder, you are providing the platform for you to learn how to use the wrist correctly. The movement of the wrist, I call it as a hooking wrist. This is what I mean by that, a hooking wrist. Here's a side view. Ready? See it? There's a frame. So when Anton, Jason, um, Victoria, the top spin they're learning to hit. The rotation of the ball is just not forward. The rotation of the ball, it pops. There's constant movement through the air, off the bounce. How much will it move? It depends on the violence, the acceleration of your wrist. So called through elasticity, through flexibility, through stretching. Any questions? Yeah, I was just wondering, you know when you do the setup with your wrist, that angle, you have it up? I mean, if you start bringing it down or if you bring it a little bit to the side, are there complications when you start doing things Absolutely. like that? What complication would you think that would maybe cause? If you just maybe lose... Okay, tracking movements. I will answer the question just through this. You, through pressure distribution, when you engage one particular part of the body, you have to be able to stabilize everything else. This is what I mean by that. I'll turn around, okay? Shoulder. Okay. I'm moving my shoulder. I'm moving my arm. Is anything else moving? No. Is anything else moving now? Your elbow. Wrist. The wrist. As soon as you lose so-called the distribution of weight, pressure, if one movement gets out of place, <laughs> or what it affects? Elbow. I mean elbow, 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 elbow. You have to be so 
mindful of your elbow, you want to use the elbow to your benefit. Because the elbow, to your benefit one side, the other side it, it's very harmful. Did I answer your question? Yeah, because I, I guess I've seen, you know, I see a lot, a lot of players will start with a racket here versus up, right? That's right. Do you know why I want it up? Again, elbow. Better position for the elbow. Another factor is looseness. You are going to be tighter here versus here. Looseness, less city. Biggest part, momentum. Where do you carry momentum from? More. Down here or higher? Here we go. Higher. And again, there are so many parts to this. It just it's overwhelming. Any other questions? Any comments you want to make? Where is speed down? That's a, that's a great question. Where do you begin to start to accelerate? Right from here. Depending on your intentions, you begin to whip the wrist, you begin to hook the wrist through elasticity, through flexibility, through stretching, continuous stretching, elasticity. Right from this point. And this is what I mean by that. Very slow. Very slow. Faster. Faster. Violence. Did you answer your question, Anton? I have a question for you. I am sure you've heard of this. Have you heard of, you know, my goodness, Anton has, or Jason, or Lisa has, you know what? These people have such massive racket head speed. Have you heard of that? What does it mean? My goodness, Jason, when he hits the ball, exactly. Racket head speed is a byproduct of your wrist. It is a result of you being so violent with your wrist. Here's an example. Exhibit A. Is my wrist moving? Zero. Zero. Exhibit B. Is my wrist moving? Absolutely. Do not ever forget that. When somebody is talking about, my goodness, Jim has such massive racket head speed. It is a result of Jim knowing how to use the wrist correctly. It's the how-to. The how-to is so tough. I have, I'll give you another framework here. So I have a question for you. Have you heard of, has anybody told you, uh, Nathan, here it is, get below the ball. To hit top spin. Is this right? Why is it not right? I'm getting below the ball. Why is it not right? There you go. Can I? I'm going to be very blunt. I have never really understood what that really meant. I'll be very blunt. The camera, I'm in front of the camera right now. It is garbage. It's one of the biggest reasons when we had the month of seminar series for injuries. One of the biggest reasons I believe people have elbow problems. I'm below the ball. Look at where the elbow is stuck. You are going to have issues with your arm because of tightness. Any questions? Jason is going to feed me some balls. I'm going to hit a few balls, and I'd like you to just watch me, okay? And you can stop me at any time that you want to stop me. You can ask questions, you can make a comment, you can interact with me anytime.
Oh. 